It looks like you've been good little MVM players this year. Have some presents. Happy Smithmas! Just like in regular Team Fortress 2, the Soldier is a generalist class in Man vs. Machine. His rockets are effective against both clusters of robots and against solitary targets like bosses and tanks. He's powerful enough to single handedly hold a choke point but mobile enough to flank the enemy and operate behind enemy lines. He has a wide range of offensive, defensive, and support weapons in his arsenal, allowing for a variety of playstyles. In fact, with the exception of a few specific counters like Reflect Pyros and Deflector Heavies, there isn't much that the soldier can't handle. The Baker's Bazooka has the most raw firepower of any rocket launcher in Man vs. Machine, and let me make this clear, it's not because it can fire volleys of rockets. The Bazooka is at its best when being tap-fired, which involves loading one rocket at a time and then immediately releasing it. The result is a potentially unending stream of rockets that easily makes up for the decreased accuracy and blast radius in most situations. The weapon is very weak against long-range targets, but its raw DPS is so high that it can match the phlogistonator for killing tanks. This thing really is in a class of its own. The stock rocket launcher and the original are the standard against which all other rocket launchers are judged. They have a lower rate of fire than the bazooka, but they do offer more control and are conducive to a more precise, less brutal playstyle. The black box is very similar, but offers a beneficial heal on hit effect in exchange for eclipse size reduction, meaning that you have to reload more frequently. This helps with survivability, since the soldier doesn't need to rely as much on other sources of healing. Players who are used to playing with a diligent medic might be a bit underwhelmed, though. Another near reskin of the stock rocket launcher is the Cow Mangler 5000. It doesn't require any ammunition, which usually makes up for its inability to deal critical hits. A situational weakness of this weapon is that it has reduced effectiveness against buildings, so you'll need to rely on your teammates to take care of any NG bots that manage to set up a sentry. But honestly, this is probably my second favorite launcher after the bazooka. The ability to simply never worry about ammo is huge in MVM. Use the Cow Mangler with the Conqueror to be completely self-sufficient in terms of both ammo and health. These five weapons, the Baker's Bazooka, the Stock Rocket Launcher, the Original, the Black Box, and the Cow Mangler are the main weapon choices for the soldier when it comes to fighting robots. The Liberty Launcher is a bit weaker, especially early in the game, but it does allow for some fast-paced playstyle with lots of jumping, so it's not really that big a deal if you want to take this weapon for a spin to have some fun. The Direct Hit basically sacrifices the ability to do splash damage, one of the biggest perks of playing the soldier, for what amounts to a free 400 credit damage upgrade at the start of the game usable, but almost always a straight downgrade from the stock, in a horde invasion game mode. The airstrike is kind of unusual. It gives you an increased clip size if you maintain a kill streak and faster firing speed while rocket jumping, but it has a lot of drawbacks that make it weak early in the game. Its rockets do less damage and have a smaller blast radius than regular rockets. You have to constantly injure yourself to stay at maximum damage output. Shooting lots of little rockets uses a ton of ammo. And 
If you die, you have to get some kills before you're back up to full strength again. With that being said, on missions with lots of upgrade money, the airstrike can get rather powerful late in the game. That is, once you can afford blast resistance, extra ammo capacity, and extra clip size. But even then, the airstrike still has one major weakness. Low ceilings. And doorways. And tunnels. Don't use the rocket jumper. Moving on. When it comes to secondary weapons, the soldier's shotguns don't really have much point in MVM. The soldier has much more powerful options available to him, particularly his backpacks. The Buff Banner and the Conqueror are the two most popular options, since the hordes of enemies in Man vs. Machine make it fast and easy to charge the rage meters. The traditional option, the Buff Banner, gives mini crits to all nearby teammates, which can be a huge temporary boost to the offensive power of your team, especially if everyone is focused on a single tank or a boss robot. It is less useful, however, when there are no teammates close enough to be boosted, and it's completely useless against robots with the battalion's backup. My personal favorite secondary, the Conqueror, pairs very well with the Beggar's Bazooka. Together, these two weapons permit an extremely aggressive playstyle. The Conqueror's passive healing effect is useful by itself, and the speed boost plus heal on hit effect when activated can turn the soldier into a literal one-man army, able to plow through groups of small bots and strafe around giants with impunity. The Conqueror is typically less useful to your teammates though, and it doesn't really help against tanks. A third option, the Battalion's Backup, negates critical hits and some damage from attacks. It can help you protect your team, but it's really designed more as a weapon for forward pushes, not a defensive game mode like Man vs. Machine. Some people like to use it when there are multiple soldiers on a server to avoid redundant boost effects, but I think that the offensive power of another buff banner or conqueror would generally be more useful. The gunboats can make jumping around the map a lot easier and help you play more aggressively, but your teammates might not appreciate you ditching one of the support options just for some extra mobility. The mantreads are almost useless in MVM. Almost. I will say there are rare situations where the knockback resistance is actually very powerful and can help you hold your ground without being pushed backward. With that being said, the mantreads should be more of a neat little trick to be aware of than something you equip on a regular basis. Check the description for the link to an old video where I used the mantreads to beat the entire first half of a wave by myself on an empty server. Another weapon that there isn't much reason to equip is the base jumper. Unlike human players, robots don't really have trouble aiming up. The base jumper does have some synergy with the airstrike, but the buff banner is still probably a better pairing. But if you're an airstrike and base jumper fanboy, let me know in the comments. Finally, we have the Righteous Bison. This weapon can penetrate targets and deal multiple instances of damage, making it more powerful than a shotgun against clusters of enemies and things with big hitboxes, which happen to be plentiful in MVM. It's not really worth using in tandem with a rocket launcher, but some players will avoid upgrading their primary and use this instead, often going so far as to equip the rocket jumper to complete the loadout. The bison's power is limited by the fact that it can't be upgraded for damage, so this is more of a fun alternative strategy than a serious one. Your melee weapon doesn't really matter that much. The disciplinary action, the escape plan, and the equalizer all have the same perks that they have in regular TF2. The pain train makes you 10% more vulnerable to bullets, so it's almost always a bad idea. But there is actually at least one custom man vs. machine map where you can capture gates back from robots, so yeah, sure, go for it. One neat trick that I will mention is that the Equalizer is actually better than the Rocket Launcher for destroying tanks, 
if you can safely get to and stay at less than about 20 health. Don't try this if you're somewhere where robots can take pot shots at you though since you will die instantly. This trick is most useful early in the game when your launcher doesn't have a lot of upgrades yet. Don't go pouring money into your pickaxe just for tanks. All of the soldiers' rocket launchers have the same basic optimal upgrade path to maximize damage output. Maximum reload speed is always the top priority. After that, alternate 400 credits between plus 25% damage and two instances of plus 10% firing speed until firing speed is at a maximum. Then, finish upgrading damage. Except, did I forget to mention the other awesome thing about the beggar's bazooka? Oh, yeah, the bazooka's firing animation is already really short, so increasing firing speed hardly does anything, and you can pretty much ignore this upgrade. Not only does the bazooka have more raw power than any other launcher, it's also effectively cheaper to upgrade. Anyway, getting a bit of health on kill early on can really help for keeping yourself alive, especially if you don't have the black box or the conqueror. You'll probably also want to get a bit of extra ammo capacity sometime before your primary weapon is at full power, especially if you're using the bazooka or the airstrike. The first level of rocket specialist is really helpful for stunning giant scout robots, but if those aren't a problem, the main benefits of this upgrade are the elimination of damage falloff and a slightly increased blast radius, so maybe get some damage upgrades first. The next two levels are not worth buying, since most of the benefits are unlocked with the first level. Plus two clip size is expensive with limited benefit, since larger clips also take longer to reload, so it's usually low priority. If you see a soldier who's underperforming in MVM, there's a good chance they've sunk a lot of their money into clip size. As always, I recommend buying crit resistance as soon as you need it and no sooner. This could be the first wave, or it could be never, depending on the mission and whether there are a lot of crit or mini crit robots. Wait until you've gotten a decent amount of upgrades for your rocket launcher before you start buying any other resistances though. The soldier is one of the classes whose weapons get drastically more powerful with upgrades, so it's important to actually get those upgrades as soon as possible. Staying alive doesn't matter much if you're the weakest fighter on your team and can't carry your own weight. The best defense really is a good offense. When you do have enough money to buy other resistances, the order of priority is usually blast, bullet, and fire. Blast resistance is good because it protects you against self-damage as well as robots, while fire is usually less of a problem than bullets are. But not always. Lastly, if you have one of the support banners equipped, upgrading that is also lower priority than your primary weapon. Increased buff duration does help, but upgrading your launcher first lets you charge your banner faster in the first place. The secret to the soldier's power is splash damage. Unless he has the beggar's bazooka equipped, he can't quite keep up with classes like the heavy, the pyro, or the scout when it comes to dealing a constant stream of damage to one target. Fortunately, in Man vs. Machine, the robots tend to come in groups, and all rocket launchers except the direct hit have an appreciable blast radius. This allows the soldier to blow up multiple bots with a single rocket, making him very effective at holding choke points against squads. Playing the soldier is usually pretty simple. Shoot rockets at the bad guys, especially bad guys that are clustered together. There isn't much aiming required. Even though the soldier is most powerful at close range, his rockets are still effective at medium range. This allows him to play further back and take cover when things get dangerous. Unlike close combat classes such as the Scout or the Pyro, which require a little more finesse to avoid taking damage. That's not to say the soldier can't play very aggressively and charge into the middle of the fray, he can. It's just that his abilities are a little more generalized than those of other classes and he can adapt to different situations. 
Due to the relative simplicity of shooting at the ground in front of enemies that walk in a straight line, the soldier is a suitable class for relatively inexperienced players, as long as they know how to upgrade their rocket launcher properly. As alluded to earlier, rocket launchers with no upgrades have only a fraction of the power of launchers at maximum strength, so players who waste their credits on bad upgrades will be underpowered throughout the game. It's crucial to reach peak offensive power as soon as practical. Some players take this so far as to say the soldier shouldn't even be played on waves 1 or 2 of difficult missions since he takes a while to really get going, but if you know me, I'm not really a fan of this outlook. It's completely okay that some classes are a little better early game while others are a little better late game. All in all, the Soldier is a fairly straightforward class. Once you've gotten the upgrades figured out, it's just a matter of shooting everything that moves. Or almost everything. One thing that you do have to watch out for is robot pyros, which can reflect rockets. A lot of pyrobots don't air blast much, but shooting rockets in front of those who do is a good way to get you and your teammates killed with mini crits, even if the pyro isn't looking at you. In fact, that means it's looking at someone else who will die instead of you. You can potentially wipe out your whole team this way, joining the ranks of players who would be more useful if they were AFK. If you can, get behind the pyros to safely shoot them in the back. If not, just find something else to do for a bit. Another counter to the soldier is the deflector heavy robot. They don't send rockets back at you, but they do shoot them out of the air, which means they are also hard to fight without flanking first. Other enemies that deserve special attention are ubermedics, giant scouts, and robots with the battalion's backup equipped. It's generally best to kill ubermedics in one hit, which the soldier can do pretty easily after getting a few upgrades. A rocket with no upgrades has a base damage of 90 and does about 100 damage at close range. Normal ubermedics have 150 health and will pop their charges if they have less than 50 health, so you do the math. You probably won't be able to kill large groups of medics cleanly without crits though. If there's no sniper, demo, or gas passer pyro, on your team to wipe out the whole group, just go ahead and do your best. If uber medics can't be killed cleanly, it's best to get them to use their charges as early as possible. Giant scouts are the bane of many teams due to their ability to just sprint past the defenders and quickly reach the bomb hatch. The most reliable ways to defeat them early in the game, before weapons are fully upgraded, are physical blocking and speed debuffs. The soldier isn't good at blocking, since rockets deal self-damage, but the Two Cities update did give him a sort of speed debuff ability in the form of the Rocket Specialist upgrade. With any level of this upgrade, direct hits from your rockets will momentarily stun robots, making very fast bots like Giant Scouts and Samurai demos much easier to kill. A third type of robot that is of special interest to the soldier is any robot with the battalion's backup equipped. This will almost always be a soldier robot, but you never really know when it comes to custom missions. Pay close attention to the wave summary robot symbols, because the standard battalion's backup symbol looks similar to the buff banner symbol. As mentioned above, the backup reduces damage from all sources and negates crits and mini crits. Robots spawn with a full charge and they're supposed to blow their horns right before entering the battlefield, but Valve has kind of broken that on a lot of missions with game updates. Anyway, the large damage reduction is a pretty big deal for all classes, except the Spy, but the crit immunity is an especially big deal for a soldier with the buff banner equipped, since it makes the mini crit effect completely pointless. A common mistake of inexperienced players, or even veterans who aren't paying attention, is to waste time deploying the buff banner against backup soldiers. Don't do that. Also, don't let a medic try to use a Kritzkrieg charge on you, and certainly don't use a Crit Canteen charge. They're not really robots, but add tanks to that list of special threats. The Beggar's Bazooka is the soldier's only primary weapon that stands out as a tank-busting tool. 
With other rocket launchers, the soldier is pretty average at killing tanks on his own, since shooting a solitary tank doesn't make efficient use of the splash damage from rockets. Still, the buff banner makes the soldier very popular as a tank buster since it's common for the entire team to crowd around a tank and attack it all at the same time. When this happens, a buff banner soldier provides a massive damage boost to the group as a whole, making him an exceptionally good tank buster, when he has help. The buff banner is a bit less useful when there are no teammates around since you have to stop shooting to activate the boost, cancelling out much of the benefit. Don't forget to shoot tanks from as close as possible without killing yourself from splash damage. This maximizes the damage done by your rockets through an effect called Ramp Up, which actually lets you do more than the base damage for each rocket. It's the opposite of damage fall off where your rockets are less effective at long distance. A bit of a side note, the soldier is arguably the best class at killing spy bots in MVM. A rookie mistake is to assume that the pyro is the best class for spy checking, but robot spies just walk around uncloaked. Fire isn't necessary, so finding and killing them is more about mobility than anything else. The soldier is able to quickly rocket jump and get within range of spies, and his rockets are well suited to dealing with their janky hitboxes. This doesn't mean you should babysit your teammates, but pay attention when the administrator announces the presence of spies, and be sure to help any engineers or medics on your team if they are in trouble. It's hard to really get more specific than that about playing as the soldier in Man vs. Machine. Playstyle can vary quite a bit depending on your loadout. The Beggar's Bazooka encourages you to wade through robot corpses while trying not to blow yourself up. The Cow Mangler 5000 means you don't have to retreat to get ammo, while the direct hit makes you kind of like a grenade knight. The Buff Banner encourages you to stick close to your team, while the gunboats let you fly around the map with ease. At the end of the day though, the soldier is about shooting rockets in the general direction but slightly ahead of robots. Just get good upgrades and you'll be fine. There aren't really that many expectations placed on the soldier in a typical MVM server. Casual players tend to see him as just a generic damage class that's weaker than the Heavy or the Demo Man, but still important for some reason, at least for the Two Cities tour. I would attribute this to all of those bad soldiers that don't know how to upgrade properly. Back when Two Cities was only a few years old, it was fairly common for even players with literally hundreds of tours to still absolutely suck at playing the soldier. Competent soldiers seem to be a bit more common now, but as long as you don't have one of the weaker rocket launchers equipped and you have one of the support backpacks, especially the buff banner, your teammates are unlikely to care very much about what you do. Just avoid actively getting in their way and make sure to help with tanks. It's generally a safe class for newbies who are trying to avoid excessive criticism from veterans while trying to learn the game. Your teammates will probably expect you to be the primary tank buster if there isn't a pyro. This means that you have to keep attacking the tank until it dies, even after your teammates get bored and return to the front. But as I said earlier, the soldier is a pretty average class when it comes to tank busting, unless he has the beggar's bazooka or is buffing at least one teammate. If you're just a stock rocket launcher soldier, there is likely to be a better tank buster on the team than you. The scout and the pyro are better than you, almost regardless of loadout. A stock heavy is better than you if it's early in the game and you don't have a lot of upgrades. A typical demo man is better than you, at least if you don't have the buff banner equipped, maybe even if you do, it depends, sticky bomb damage is weird and Look, if it's early in the game and your rocket launcher isn't upgraded yet, basically every other class has some way to do more damage than a stock soldier against a tank. The nugget of truth behind the whole rocket launchers are good for tank busting myth is that A, the soldier is often seen as an expendable class who doesn't really have anything more important to do, and B, the rocket launcher really does have more synergy with crit boosts than weapons like the minigun or the scatter gun when it comes to tanks, so it probably is better for a Kritzkrieg medic to charge a soldier rather than a heavy or a scout. Also, the Baker's Bazooka is really powerful and will melt through tanks faster than any weapon other than the Phlogistonator. 
Anyway, getting back to expectations, one possible opinion you might come across is that the soldier should not be played in expert missions. This idea has its roots in the fact that all three official Valve missions start off each player with only 400 credits, and, as mentioned previously, the soldier will usually be significantly weaker than less upgrade-dependent classes, at least for the first couple of waves. The idea that the soldier is taboo in Expert is a bit exaggerated, though. The soldier is more mobile and tends to be better at fighting against groups than the heavy thanks to splash damage, so it's a bit more complicated than just comparing raw DPS. Still, it's generally true that a team is better off if a less experienced player chooses to be the second or third heavy instead of the soldier. Experienced players, the kind of player that you theoretically expect to find in expert mode, will do fine. Of course, custom missions are not necessarily balanced the same as the Valve missions, so anyone who tells you categorically to never play the soldier in custom expert is just dumb. Before I go, I'd like to point out that I've begun adding errata to the video description for these MVM treatises. It's basically impossible for anyone, no matter how smart they are, to write anything this long on a technical topic without making at least some mistakes, and I am certainly no exception to that rule. One example of a mistake I made is that in the Scout video I said the Soda Popper should upgrade exactly the same way as the Force of Nature, but the Soda Popper has a built-in reload speed buff that messes with the math a bit. The difference isn't huge, but it's still very embarrassing to know that I was not even upgrading my own favorite scout weapon 100% optimally. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't support video annotations anymore, so the errata have to go in the description. I will also try to include any changes due to Valve updating the game, cross your fingers, in ways that affect how MVM works in the errata section. This has been Underscore Gaming's Man vs. Machine tutorial series, The Soldier. I hope you learned something, but if you've already mastered these basics, feel free to check out one of my other videos covering more complex classes, like The Scout and The Spy. Finally, click subscribe if this content interests you, and keep pinging me with comment notifications so that I don't forget to keep working on new videos. Until next time!